Sean, how does it feel to be cooking a steak, opening some wine, and knowing that there's a grizzly bear having his dinner right over there? Yeah, I'm gonna have more for dinner. Just gotta get the food prepared first. I got a seat right at the table for him. Last time aboard Freedom, we departed Squirrel Cove in Desolation Sound to explore the nearby Octopus Islands, a large and scenic anchorage with lots to offer cruisers, even if only staying for 24 hours or less. After exploring on the dinghy for Mr. Solster's birthday and fixing an urgent problem on deck, we put on our artistic hats to do what many have done before us, leave behind a small memory of freedom for other visitors to admire when they visit. Now we're up bright and early again to get underway in time for a slack tide in the lower rapids of Okasolo Channel, a must for us if we want to make it to the Broughtons by dinner. Today's route is going to take us 82 nautical miles north into the Broughton's Archipelago. Desolation sounds more rugged, wild, and arguably more beautiful neighbor to the north. Good morning. We are en route to the Broughtons. We are cruising along at 11 knots. Uh, we left early, one, to hit the rapids um, just north of Octopus Islands at 5.07 when they were at Slack. Um, the next time at Slack was later in the day and we would have basically had to stay um, another day, which wouldn't have been bad because the Octopus Islands were great. We were there for 24 hours, uh, a little less, um, but we could have stayed a few days. There's a, a lot to do. Um, but because we're packing a lot in this trip, we wanted to keep moving, so we're moving to the Broughtons. Um, and uh, we're going in search of bears. We know of a place that is um, known to have a ton of grizzly bears. However, it's not an anchorable spot. The water's too deep. Um, there's like this shelf. Um, it goes from like 10 feet, 30 feet, and then like 160 feet. So. We're gonna play it by ear a little bit. We're not exactly sure where we're gonna go. Um, we might have to dingy there. We might just have to do a day trip. Um, we'll see. Uh, right now we're in the Johnstone Strait. It's pretty gusty. It's 15 sustained, gusting 18. Um, not horrible, but in the strait, uh, it's a little choppy, but not bad. And, oh, the second reason we left really early was to catch this amazing current uh, going north in the strait. So it's just, we're making really good time. Uh, we probably shaved off two to three hours from our trip by leaving and making sure we were going with the current, which is why we're going at 10.8 knots right now versus our usual six and a half to 6.8. So making good time. Uh, it's a beautiful day. So uh, we're looking forward to getting up there and hopefully spotting some grizzly bears maybe, who knows. Holy guacamole, 12.6 knots. Oh my goodness, that just shaved an hour off of our trip. Going from 10.6 to 12.6. Wow. ETA is now 12.11, it was like 1.15. I don't think we'll, we probably won't keep that up this whole, the next five hours, but. When you go 6.8 and you dump almost double your speed. Wow. That's a good day aboard a trawler. Wow. Sean's probably like seasick in the shower right now. 
Yeah, he's probably bopping around. It's, it's pretty choppy still. But whoa, whew. it's 12.6. Oh, we're flying. So, Salamander, we're flying. I know. We might need seat belts. <laughs> wow, this is so weird. You, you can tell there's a shelf. Literally, there's a line where the currents must shift or the water, like, I don't exactly know what I'm trying to say here, but where we go from this chop because of the current and it is like flat as a board beyond. So about, I don't know, maybe 500 feet from now, it'll be super flat. I'm guessing it's wind and currents and currents colliding. Here we go, we're coming to the end of our chop. Wow. And just like that, it's magic. Just like that, we go to 7.1 knots, 12.6 to 7.1 in under five minutes. That's crazy. Go from 6.0, oh no, it's dropping, and now our ETA is 432. 12.11 to 432. Boo. This is why we try to plan our trips around the tides and currents. Good timing helps us save on fuel and shaves hours off of a trip so we can get to places faster. Our good timing today not only got us more speed and fuel economy, but it also got us a really exciting welcome from the locals. Why'd you speed up freedom? Because there's a bear crossing this channel that we're going into about and Bev's are ready to come in about half a mile out. right behind me. That's the, that's the guy who see the who sees the bear? Yeah. Right in that the red side stand by. What do you think the chances are we see the bear? Probably pretty good. Or there's one bear, there's probably more bear. Yeah. And it's low tide, so they're feeding. Yeah. OMG, imagine if we saw a bear swimming. <laughs> swimming! How fast can a bear swim? I have no idea, but I'd like to see it. So you're even wearing your bear jammies. Oh, buddy! He uh, <laughs> wants to make sure that bears know that he's one of them. Yeah. See if they can eat. Our first
first stop in the Broughtons is Glendale Cove, tucked midway up BC's longest fjord, the night inlet in the heart of the Great Bear Rainforest. Although the charted depths in this cove are deep, meaning we'll be using all of our 400 feet of anchor chain, it's definitely worth the trip if you can manage. It's a protected habitat for grizzly bears, and it's known to have the largest concentration of grizzly bears in British Columbia. It's been on our radar for years, so to be here and to witness this incredible spectacle of pure beauty is really quite amazing. drops off though? Isn't there a shelf? Uh, no, no, not bad. I mean, it goes 30, 100, and then like 160. Yeah, well, I guess if we're in 100. Shortly after we arrived, we got a visit from some folks from the nearby Night Inlet Lodge. First I thought we were in trouble or couldn't be here unless we were a sanctioned tour boat, but thankfully they were very welcoming and just here to make sure we knew the rules for where we could and couldn't be and to offer some safety tips when viewing the bears in the cove. So we're not in trouble. I thought we were in trouble when I saw those guys pull up. Um, but he did mention that there's um, a native um, First Nations tribe that owns the river. So at the very base of the cove, uh, there's a river entrance and we should not go into there. Of course, there's the best bear viewing in there. He did mention that lately, right where we're anchored on shore, they've had a lot of really good bear sightings. And there's also a mating pair by this finger that comes out uh, right behind where we're anchored. So I think there's a good chance we're gonna see some grizzlies. Sean's <laughs> cleaning up the boat. It is a salt mine right now. I'm just doing some research um, on some things. And then uh, I'm just gonna enjoy the night. And I think tomorrow's gonna be another early day so that we are ready to go. and see what we find see if there's bears popping up on shore um he said the tides also have been really low which we noticed um in the octopus islands the tidal swings have been really really low and i'm thinking it's there's uh, a full moon coming soon so um we've had like 16 feet of tidal swings which is even more than we get in seattle seattle's average is like 12 12 and a half feet it's pretty crazy just how much more land we've been seeing um at low tide so we shall see. Sean, you didn't. Huh? You what? dressed for the occasion. I did. Look at your shirt in the backdrop. Oh, I can see oh this. my God. I, can see I wonder if that's where Helly Hansen got their inspiration from. Probably. Dude. And your sunglasses? Wow. You need to be a Glendale Cove model. Oh, yeah. Any bears yet? I think there's one right there. Seriously? No. Oh. <laughs> we're going to find one. Oh, we're going to find one. Exploring places like this is a great reminder of just how small and powerless we as humans actually are. The world around us is massive and vast, and many of the animals who call this place home could end our existence in a heartbeat if we don't respect their space. So although our excitement is building, we're going to take it slow, stay quiet, and keep a healthy distance from shore. can't explore Glendale Cove on your own vessel, don't worry, you can always book a stay at the Night Inlet Lodge. This floating lodge attracts visitors from all over the world, and according to their website, you'll spend your days viewing magnificent grizzly bears and incredible wildlife, and your nights enjoying fine dining and accommodation in the most spectacular of natural environments. Before 
coming back to Freedom for dinner, we decided to take one more lap around the west side of the cove. Luckily we did because we spotted our first grizzly bear snacking on shore. Grizzly bears, also known as the North American brown bear, are some of the largest subspecies of brown bear. And although this guy or gal blended into the shoreline at first, once we spotted it and inched a little closer, it was quite striking in size. In fact, grizzly bears near the coast tend to be larger, while inland grizzly bears tend to be smaller. saying farewell to the first bear, we spotted a second. Sean, how does it feel to be cooking a steak, opening some wine, and knowing that there's a grizzly bear having his dinner right over there? Yeah, I'm gonna have more for dinner. Just gotta get food prepared first. I got a seat right at the table for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know they swim, right? I hope he likes uh, steak and red wine. Looks look like he was eating a lot of greenery. I know. I don't think he's going for a vegan diet tonight. I think he could go for your steak. Maybe I'll eat the mushrooms. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild having dinner with this in the wild. In the wild. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, we're having dinner in the wild. Like, seriously, we could die tomorrow and be happy. At least I could. And then right around the corner is where he's having his dinner. He or she. Good morning from Glendale Cove. Six in the morning. Um, I wish I could say the wind died, but it didn't. It wasn't too bad. We're still bopping around a little bit. Looking forward to uh, heading back to shore in about an hour. See if we can find any bears again. I have a good feeling we're gonna see another one, at least one, but you know, where there's one, there's gotta be two, <laughs> maybe three. I think once you pour that maple syrup, Sean, they'll start swimming. Ooh, oh, hey, that looks good. 
You're a pancake maker. Eat them while they're hot. Maybe it was a coincidence or maybe not, but the minute Sean's pancakes were ready, the grizzly bear appeared on shore for breakfast. morning sighting of not only one but three grizzlies, including the mating pair we had heard about, not only checked a major item off of our bucket lists, but was hands down one of the most incredible experiences of our lives. We'll certainly never forget Glendale Cove, and we hope to come back again soon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you won't miss next time when we continue on exploring the Broughtons, British Columbia's Wild Kingdom. We'll see you next time.